Hello and welcome to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast YouTube edition. I am your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today we're diving into episode number two of Acceptable or Unacceptable. If this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. All right. Well, today we're diving into episode number two of the Acceptable Unacceptable Tech Talk here. Um, today is all about tension lines. So I have three different uh, tension line setups here, and we're going to dive into those and uh, kind of break them down and figure out if they're acceptable or unacceptable. So stay tuned. All right, so let's kick today's episode off. All right, so uh, right now I have a basic uh, tension line. So let's dive in to see what that looks like. All right, over here I have two bolts, two locking carabiners, two figure nines, giving me two working ropes into two S-Tech uh, flows, two carabiners and two more bolts. So is this acceptable? And yes, it is. Okay, it cannot get any more basic than this, all right? Now, the only thing we could do to make this a little better if we want to play the game of good, better, best practices is figure out a way to load share this side and load share that side. Most commonly, a lot of people will load share the knots because it's easy and forget about uh, load sharing the control descent devices. Um, but if you're going to do one, do the other. Now, keep in mind, this is a vertical orientation, so actually load sharing is pretty much not possible. Um, but in a horizontal plane where uh, this is most common, then absolutely um, try to load share this side if you're going to load share that side or vice versa. All right, so keep it simple. Um, tension lines are the one thing that we probably use the most in the industrial industry, um, but kind of know the least about. All right, now the big thing we want to keep in mind when we are dealing with tension lines is angles. So uh, 160, whoop, 160 degrees, you don't want to exceed it, okay? So make sure that you're using a three to one, one person to tension this line up and call it good. All right, so next up here, I have a tension line with a intermediate, all right? Is this acceptable or unacceptable? And the answer here is it depends, okay? Uh, you have to do a risk assessment on the situation, uh, figure out where people are working. Are they gonna work on this side or they're gonna work on this side of the intermediate? And what is your rescue plan? That is going to actually be the determining factor, what your rescue plan is. Now, why do we rig up tension lines with intermediates? Okay, all they do is cut down on deflection. So on long spans, throw an intermediate in, it'll just cut down on the deflection make your day a little easier, um, providing you don't have to pass this intermediate, all right? So going from one side to the other side, it's gonna be a little bit of a nuisance. Um, so yeah. Now, are intermediates required? Absolutely not. Um, there is a thing out there, people are saying that you need a intermediate over 20 feet. Um, complete bogus. The reality is you got a big structure here, you got a big structure there. Um, and you have a massive span in the middle with nothing to rig to. So this is why we have a tension line. All right, so the intermediate is not required, um, but it definitely helps out with deflection. Now, like I said about the rescue, if the rescue plan is to lower the tension line on either side of this point, then this does need to be doubled up, okay? Make sure you're using adequate equipment here to double this up. Um, or whatever your intermediate is designed uh, for. Make sure that uh, you have good solid anchorage, okay? And uh, go from there, all right? So what would that look like? All right, so just got another one rigged up here, ready to go. So I'm gonna slap that into the second bolt, lock the carabiner, slap the second one in, Tension this up, make it all nice and tidy, and there you go. 
All right, so now in the event of a rescue, if the, your rescue plan was to lower the tension line, to lower it, no problem. We can put 100% of the weight on this side, 100% on the weight on that side, and don't have to worry about it. All right, this is singled up. If that uh, single point failed and it was um, V'd out, it would be a big, big drop. So a prime example is if I got this here, this goes down, there's my intermediate, goes to that. All right, if this single piece fails, that is a massive drop in the system and massive additional shock load to the system. All right, so we wanna make sure that this here is doubled up if we're going to lower. All right, so next up is a high directional tension line. And now is this acceptable or unacceptable? And the answer here is simple, it's not acceptable. Anytime that we put a high directional point in, as we see here, it absolutely has to be doubled up, okay? The compounding weight on that anchor could cause it to fail in any kind of way, not something that we want. This here is a small angle here, but if it dropped, we'd have a free fall distance of approximately around four feet, which isn't, doesn't seem like a lot, but keep in mind that the higher this is from our point of attachment, the worse it's going to be, all right? So double it up every single time. Make sure you're doing an adequate risk assessment as well. Make sure that you're doing an adequate risk assessment on the rescue plan, okay? If I go to lower this out, person's working on this point here, okay? The angle here is going to increase the impact of the loading on that high directional point, all right? So keep those sort of things in mind. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please make sure to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell for notifications as I have new content coming out every Sunday. All right, until next time.